Miyako's idea came from a, a picture of my grandmother. Um, about two and a half years ago, I went back home, my hometown, Osaka, Japan, to honor my grandmother's anniversary uh, from her 10th, tenth, I should say, 10th uh, years of her passing. And uh, during, that, during that honoring, I found a picture of her with another woman. Um, the picture, she probably was probably in the early 20s. And uh, I guess I should, if I were to explain about my grandmother, she always wore jeans or polo shirts or men's slacks, dressed up very funky for her age. She'd be 92 if she was alive. And especially uh, growing up in Japan, um, you know, she was a very masculine looking woman. And she never smiled in any of the photos that I've taught before. And uh, the pictures that I found, I felt very uh, much of a love between uh, her and this woman. Spring is a short film about a young man's uh, encounter with uh, a stranger for sex and how uh, for SM sex and how that will kind of alter his perception about himself in the world. I wanted to do four short films kind of about my experience of being gay I guess and um, so I thought four short films about the season and how the season is a poetic interpretation of what happens in the film. Bark. Are you joking? Don't talk back to me. You may only say yes sir or yes master. Now walk around the room like a dog. Bark. Oof. That's awful. Do it properly. Oof. Oof. Louder. Oof. Oof. That's good. Do it again. Oof. Oof. It was originally called the Casanova King, and it was originally all about a um, drag dance troupe. Who um, there's a Scottish dance tr troupe, and um, the Casanova King is tr trying to train up new members, so he, he can um, enter them into the like the international um, drag king Grand Prix or something like that. It's kind of like strictly dance, strictly kind of dancing type thing. And um, but um, but yeah, it just it just it just became this thing where it was kind of becoming more of an issue. The kind of trans thing within it, and the, the drag thing within it was kind of becoming too much of an issue. And, and I didn't want to make an issue film, so it kind of started becoming just about the character itself uh, by, by herself and um, yeah, putting it into a situation that everyone knows about. Like everyone's been in that situation where you're trying to go on a holiday, you're in the driveway, you're desperately trying to leave, someone goes for a wee, when they come back someone else goes to get something to eat and stuff like that. So everyone could relate to that, so it kind of became about that. No Alex, you're not going like that, go get changed. Alex, do you hear me? I said, go get changed. No? Right, we're not going anywhere until you get changed. Hey, let's get moving. What's going on? <laughs> what are you supposed to be? I'm a tranny, aren't I? You look like James Dean. Don't encourage her. Alex, get inside and change. Mum? We have to pick up Nana, she's not going to like this one bit. She can piss off. At first I wanted to make a documentary um, with a person who is telling um, her or uh, his story 
and uh, at the end you get to know that uh, this is not a real story but his dream of what he wants to be or she wants to be and then um, uh, later I thought uh, it's more interesting to make a fiction film um, because I have uh, much more freedom and I can take uh, write a person and to tell the story I want to tell. And Nun ja, ich habe fünf gesunde Kinder, ich habe ein wunderschönes Zuhause, ich habe einen liebevollen Ehemann an meiner Seite. Was könnte ich mir mehr wünschen? Nein, nein, das können Sie mir glauben. It's called Lost Tracks, and it's a, it's a coming of age story. It's about a young girl who's growing up in, in rural Shropshire, and it's about the kind of the difficulties of being isolated in a rural community, not having you know, the scope and the lifestyle that, that might exist for people growing up in, in a more you know a town or a, or a city. And it's about her frustrations with her family, with her friends, just with the situation she's in. And it's about her plans to run away. To, to Thailand actually, is where wow. she's planning to run away. <laughs> she, uh, she meets a girl and they, they start a friendship and through this friendship they kind of reassess uh, why she wants to run away and whether she's running away for the right reasons. I just had enough. My friends were wasters. I can't stand my dad. He acts as if my mum never existed. I just need to get away. I guess wherever you are, it won't be here. I have no reason to stay. It's my graduation project at uh, ECAL, the uh, University of Arts and Design in Switzerland. And uh, we had well, like one year to uh, write the script, to find financing and uh, shoot the movie actually. So that's where it came from. Well, there's a lot of little details from my childhood, like uh, the mother and uh, the costumes, the horns on his head and stuff, which are from my childhood. But then the story himself is, uh, isn't autobiographical. So. I'm happy that it has been received well by a straight audience as well. So it's not just uh, comprehensible for a gay audience, but for a larger audience. So that's. Tu me trouves comment? Tu penses que je vais me faire draguer ce soir? Maman. Quoi? Tu crois que je ne plais pas aux hommes, moi? Alors dis-moi. Comment tu me trouves T'es très belle. Oui. Au fait, tu m'aurais pas 50 balles pour ce soir Je la connais. How has the film been received then, sort of taking this unique approach? Uh, it was received really well, and I think uh, people found the story, which is half autobiographical, pretty touching, I guess, and uh, it's been screened in several different types of festivals, which some of them were, were LGBT festivals and some were animation festivals or uh, student film festival. So I think uh, different people just uh, appreciate it in different ways. And do you think it's been equally received from both straight and gay audiences? I think the gay audience understand more about the film and uh, I think when, it, when the film screens at gay film festival, people of course see a different angle in it, which uh, people in regular animation festival sometimes miss. Uh, which is what I was trying to say in the film, that different people just uh, see things differently. 
and they can miss things, but they can only see other new things because they missed some of them. Lunch time. It's 12 o'clock. Time to go up to the dining room. For years, this part was quite simple. Get in line, take a tray, take a plate, get a hot dog and go sit down. But then, when I was about 12 or so, someone at the top decided it was time for a makeover. Goodbye crummy old formica trays, hello colorful plastic ones. Most people were quite happy with the change. The new trays in pink and in light grey added a bit of colour to our ageing dining room. And I'd be the only one standing in line, looking straight ahead and thinking to myself, please don't let it be a pink one. And you're both writer um, and composer and right. producer. Right, right. Um, can you tell us a bit about um, how that was for you, being three major roles, but also your composition process for the music itself? Okay, well, to answer the first question, Yes, it was overwhelming and um, sleepless nights and uh, lost some weight, and, which was good, and, uh, but it was great. I, I, I learned a lot and um, I would prefer to do it that way. I don't, I don't mind doing those things, um, but next time I'll have an assistant. And as far as the composition process, uh, it was a song that I had in my head for many years, and uh, I thought it would make a great movie song, and when we put this film together, it came rushing back to me, and actually it was a piece of cake by then because I already had the whole song in my head, so yeah. I just sat down on the piano, played it once, and that's how it came out.